So friends, good morning and welcome to the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Today's symposium is up and significant as it, as it will give us a glimpse of the global economy and what it means to the Philippines. This event was made possible with the, with the assistance of our partners from the Showa Institution, Institution for Economic Research in Taiwan. Um, thank you and, and please enjoy your stay in the Philippines. Without much ado, may I call on PIDS President and Lead Convener of the Philippine Apex Study Center Network, Dr. Celia Reyes, for the opening remarks. Good morning, everyone. Um, Ambassador Lourdes Caraguire from the Department of Foreign Affairs. Um, our esteemed colleague, uh, Dr. Francis Ina from uh, Research Fellow and our also uh, director for the PSCN and uh, our visitors from um, um, the Chungwa Institution for Economic Inst Institution for Economic Research, uh, Ms. Christy Su and Mr. Chen Cheng Ho. Um, um, our colleagues from ISEAS, uh, Yusuf Ishak Institute, who will be joining us um, by uh, um, uh, telephone, um, our colleagues from ADB, um, Joseph uh, Maria Slingham and Mr. Paul Feliciano, um, colleague from Foreign Service Institute, uh, Mr. Javito Katigbak, um, Friends from the Ministry of Economic Affairs of Taiwan, Mr. Po Chang Chen, and um, also from the um, Executive Yuan Office of Trade Negotiations from, from Taiwan, Mr. Da Ching Yang and Mr. Morris um, Chung Chao Wang, um, also from the Thai Economic and Cultural Office in the Philippines, um, Ms. Lin Chang. And um, I'm looking for our colleague, uh, Willy, Willy Nuki. Of course, uh, who has been a very valuable uh, uh, participant to many of our um, seminars, um, and um, colleagues from the different government agencies and partners from the ASCN, um, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to, to everyone. Um, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, together with the Chungwa Institution for Economic Research, is holding today's symposium titled The Global Economic Environment a symposium on the global economy and what it means for the Philippines. PIDS and CIER are engaged in a memorandum of understanding that aims to enhance research collaboration through research programs and activities on mutual trade and investment interests. When I became president of PIDS, one of my goals is to engage more partners in the region to become a globally recognized policy research institution and this research symposium is an example of such engage engagements. In last year's annual public policy conference, PIDS was focused on the fourth industrial revolution and led a discussion on the future of work, dig digitalization in the country, disruptions brought about by the digital economy, and other similarly related events that have brought an element of uncertainty in our shared future. Globalization 4.0, as the World Economic Forum has coined it, has brought the digital era to trade, commerce, services, and markets. That said, the global economy has also experienced a slowing pace in the past decade. The cost of moving goods has stopped falling, multinational firms are changing strategies, and activity is shifting towards services, an occurrence that the economist has popularized as globalization. Today, we have gathered a number of resource speakers that will present regional issues that have global implications. The discussions that we will have today will help guide us towards understanding globalization 4.0 and thus globalization much better. We have invited Ms. Wang and Ms. Luzar from the ISEAS Yusof Ishak Institute, who will be joining us virtually from Singapore. They will present the State of Southeast Asia 2019 survey results and elucidate on regional outlook and developments. This will be followed by Mr. Joseph and Mr. Paul from the Asian Development Bank, who will be presenting their paper on the impact of trade conflict on developing Asia. Both presentations will provide us ample background and information 
to explore further regional issues and economic landscapes surrounding Asia. We will also have with us Ms. Christy Zhu from the CIER, who will be discussing the economic and trade cooperation between Taiwan and the Philippines under Taiwan's new southbound South policy. And Mr. Jose Kapatipa, whose presentation on RCEP and the future of Asian free trade agreements will provide key insights as to how the Philippines could further engage its partners in the region. In the region, ASEAN and Taiwan have with them key roles that can provide opportunities for countries such as the Philippines to innovate and participate in the digital economy. With these four presentations covering the Asian economic landscape in general and regional cooperation being discussed through Taiwan's new southbound policy and through RCEP, I'm confident that we'll be able to explore further questions such as how will the Philippines navigate the evolving global landscape brought about by Globalization 4.0. Amidst all the uncertainties in global and regional events, how can the Philippines cooperate and collaborate with neighboring countries in the region? By the way, this is actually um, the start of our seminars, um, public fora, and um, consultations regard leading up to our annual public policy conference um, that will be held in September on September 19 uh, this year focusing on all of these uncertainties and how we can navigate globalization and transition so um, I'm encouraging everyone here with us today to actively participate during the open forum so this forum is the best opportunity for us all to share our views and insights and update each other on what each of us has been doing that is related to the globalization 4.0 and this globalization. So um, we're also looking forward to your participation in that conference that I mentioned earlier in September. So the inputs that we would get from here would actually contribute a lot towards um, the program that we will have in September as well as being able to identify um, additional speakers um, who might be able to share further insights on how we can not navigate um, that, that new globalization that we're experiencing um, right now. So again, welcome to PIDS and, and good day to all. Thank you for your message, Dr. Reyes. Now, uh, we are deeply honored to have with us our next speaker. She held various posts overseas as the country's permanent representative to the, to the United Nations office in Vienna, as well as to the UN Industrial Development Organization, UN Office on Drugs and Crime, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, and the International Anti-Corruption Academy. She also served as, as the Philippines Ambassador Extraordinary and then potentially to Austria with, with concurrent jurisdiction over Croatia, Slovenia, and the Slovak Republic. She was also the country's ambassador and permanent representative to, to the UN's uh, office in New York before joining the Office of the American Affairs as Assistant Secretary. She also joined the Office of the Maritime and Ocean Affairs as Assistant Secretary prior to her present position as the officer in charge and the Philippines APEC senior official under the Office of the Undersecretary for International Economic Relations of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Uh, friends, let us all welcome our keynote speaker today, Ambassador Lourdes Ipa-Laguire. Thank you, Kadik, for the kind introduction. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's a good day today, a very pleasant day. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, PIDS, the Philippine Institute of Development Studies, for organizing this forum, which aims to provide a local, regional economic outlook amidst the evolving global challenges to countries in the region. I acknowledge the Chumwa Institution for Economic Research. Here we have Ms. Christy Chu uh, for partnering with PIDS, our lead convener for the Philippine uh, Apex Study Center Network. I also acknowledge, of course, my former colleague at Veneda, PIDS, President uh, Dr. Celia Reyes and her team, and uh, 
all my colleagues uh, in the government present and other participants. I'd like to specially greet uh, my former boss at the NEDA, uh, Assistant Director General Billy Luki. Sir, it's been a long time. <laughs> decades ago <laughs> and uh, I am accompanied today by my team, uh, Senior Special Assistant uh, Eric Tamayo and uh, Assistant Director Oli um, from uh, my office, uh, the Office of uh, the Under Secretary for International Economic Relations of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Um, colleagues, uh, economic diplomacy is a vital pillar of Philippine foreign policy and under our strategic plan 2017-2022, the Department of Foreign Affairs is expected to work towards expanding and deepening economic diplomacy programs and pursue Philippine development priorities in bilateral, regional, and multilateral forums. The DFA co-chairs with the NEDA, the Philippine Council on Regional Cooperation, which oversees the engagements, our engagements with APEC, ASEAN, ASEM, and FIALA. This is the Forum for East Asia and Latin American countries. My office, the Office of the Undersecretary for International Economic Relations, chairs the technical board uh, on APEC matters. Um, the past few years have brought significant changes to the international economic environment. Global growth is projected to decline to 2.9% this year from 3.5% last year. Uh, top risks often cited are expanding economic inequality, financial market volatility, increased protectionism, and trade tensions with the consequential slowdown in global trade. We are now faced with new and emerging challenges that have come about as the flip side of globalization and open regionalism. Today, the multilateral trading system under the World Trade Organization, or WTO, is challenged by three, I would say three, among others, existential threats. First, there's the looming paralysis of the WTO's dispute settlement mechanism. During the Uruguay round of multilateral trade negotiations, there were several attempts to put under the umbrella of the World Trade Organization or WTO several issues aside from, of course, uh, trade-related investment measures or claims or um, uh, trade aspects of uh, intellectual property rights or trips. There were also other issues that wanted to be put also onto the plate of WTO. And these issues uh, include labor and trade, environment and trade, human rights and trade, etc. Um, the WTO has been an attractive proposition uh, organization because unlike other institutions or organizations that rely on moral suasion to enforce compliance, WTO has teeth. It has teeth through its dispute settlement mechanism. Now the jewel of the WTO, its dispute settlement mechanism, is threatened with paralysis. Second, we see rising protectionism. While WTO has allowed regional and bilateral, bilateral trading arrangements to flourish, they are seen as building blocks and not as stumbling blocks to multi multilateralism. Now WTO is threatened by wanton unilateral measures that exploit loopholes in the WTO. Third, amid this situation, Countries are pushing for piecemeal and sectoral accords uh, like e-commerce and investment. While it may be constructive to push for liberalization anywhere and any way we can, and maybe this is seen as a positive for like-minded countries, but at the same time, it underlines, however, the sense that the WTO's broader negotiating agenda is mired in disagreement. Colleagues, uh, the rules-based uh, multilateral trading system, as we thought we knew it, 
it is now in need of support, support and modernization, as there are divergences in priorities and paradigms among trading partners. It is important that countries, especially members of course of the WTO, categorically reaffirm their collective commitment to a multilateral trading system that is open, non-discriminatory, and uh, rules-based. Um, colleagues, like an unstoppable steam locomotive, we are in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution and the third unbundling of globalization. Innovation 4.0 has necessitated adjustments in the way we conduct business and the way we enable our people with the skill sets necessary to cope with the unavoidable disruptions. Uh, jobs are being rendered either obsolete or redundant. And the need for retooling and preparing our young populations for the digital economy is as great as ever. Indeed, the global economic landscape has changed dramatically in the past few years alone. We need to catch up fast or be left behind to bite the dust. Uh, colleagues, there are also there have been dramatic shifts in the political landscape, and it has reared its ugly head as well all around the world. The British people in the UK are in the midst of an agonizing and slow march in a bid to take back control as they voted themselves out by a narrow margin from the EU. The United States uh, wants American first policy but scaling back on global economic integration, the very platform that, that transported millions of people out of poverty. The US and China, the two biggest economies in the world, are skirting around trade tensions while battling for the hearts and minds of nations around the world with their own respective big ticket infrastructure programs and the so-called checkbook and death book diplomacy. These are all very disruptive forces indeed. International economic integration enjoyed a high standing in priority in a not so distant past. Perhaps we all have become victims of our own success. We all knew that globalization would have its pluses and minuses. We self-assuredly assumed that displacement brought about by globalization would be addressed by retooling, retraining, timely safety nets, and compensation. Our shortcomings have come to haunt us. The so-called resurgence of populism is but a manifestation of the disaffection brought upon the multitude by the failure of society and governments to address what would have been important to our peoples, and these are empowerment and inclusion. Empowering people and ensuring inclusiveness and equality are critical to realizing sustainable development. In a joint report released only last month, uh, exactly on 27 March 2019, by the UN uh, Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, ESCAP, the Asian Development Bank, or ADB, and the UNDP, United Nations Development Program, in a common report titled Accelerating Progress, Unempowered, Inclusive, and Equal Asia and the Pacific. Uh, in this report, it was shown that empowering people and ensuring their inclusion in social, economic, and political activities can accelerate progress towards the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development or the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. The Philippines' long-term vision or Ambition 20, Ambition Natin 2040 places the Filipino people at the center of development. After all, it is the Filipino people that create, drive, and benefit from the prosperity and dynamism of our country. 
The Philippines has outlined a zero to 10 point socioeconomic agenda that include accelerating infrastructure spending, promotion of rural development, improving social protection programs, and investing in human capital, while at the same time fighting the evils of corruption and criminality. In the midst of the recent global challenges, the Philippines has kept steadfast on its goals. As the former U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama once said, when they go low, we go high. The Philippines continues to aim high in spite of the global challenges uh, we are all facing. The country boosts one of the fastest growing economies in the region as well as in the world, consistently posting GDP growth of about of above six percent in the last seven years. A strong currency and low debt to GDP ratio, robust uh, foreign currency reserves, a steady job market, and increased infrastructure spending. It has positioned the country uh, to meet uh, modern day challenges and capitalize on opportunities ushered in by the fourth industrial revolution. The Philippines is also developing its local industries through the government's manufacturing resurgence program and by further capitalizing on the competitiveness, competitiveness of its services sector. Already, the Philippine exports have registered a 17% growth from 2011 to 2017. Industry-centered measures are further complemented by landmark legislations that aim to, inc to increase the ease of doing business in the country and the global competitiveness of the Philippine economy. The Philippines shall maintain the dynamism of its economy if we are to stay close to our goal of reaching a high income status and to ensure that the economic pie is enlarged and the poor's share in the pie is increased. With that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you so much for the, for the inspiring words, Ambassador. Our next speaker is a young research fellow here at the PIDS, and he'll give us an introduction to the Philippine Apex Studies Center Network Ladies and gentlemen, let us hear from PASCN's project director, Dr. Francis Kimba. Thank you, Wayne. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as you've heard earlier, uh, the, this um, symposium is actually sponsored by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and the Philippine Apex as the lead convener of the Philippine Apex Studies Center Network and of course CIER. But um, I need to do, my role here is to introduce to you what is this network and what do we do. So in November of 1996, the Philippine Apex Studies Center Network was established by virtue of Administrative Order Number 303. It is actually the government's response to the APEC leaders' initiatives that called for member economies to foster regional cooperation among higher education and research institutions on key regional economic challenges. The PASCN has provided opportunities for collaborative research among its member institutions and serves as a forum to discuss important regional integration issues and as these impact the Philippine economy. Some of the activities or that we have done um, include hosting the APEC Study Center Consortium Conference in 2015 as one of the APEC 2015 Song 2 meetings in Boracay. Who are the members of this, net, of this network? I think some of them are represented here. Uh, let me just uh, mention them alphabetically. We have the Asian Institute of Management, the Ateneo de Manila University, Central Luzon State University, De La Salle University, um, the Foreign Service Institute, 
who is also presenting later. Uh, Mindanao State University, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies as the lead convener. Siliman University, University of Asia and the Pacific, University of the Philippines, University of San Carlos, and Xavier University. Um, yes, and we've already, we, I, I've also seen the representatives from uh, uh, Siliman University and University of San Carlos. Uh, welcome to the yeah, Let me just move quickly to the programs of AASCN. So we actually have four. Um, the first is the research, and it's generally based on APEC agenda and related issues on regional integration and globalization as these impact the Philippine economy. Experts from AASCN member institutions are tapped to do research studies through the provision of research grants. We also have the thesis Thesis and Dissertation Assistance Program, which aims to extend financial assistance to graduate students of PSC and member institutions in the writing and production of their thesis and dissertation. As a member of the Technical Board on APEC Matters, the PSCN also aims to provide technical assistance to the government. And finally, where this is part of the, the programs our conference today is part of the program, the Information and Dissemination and Publication Program, where we, um, where we organize symposium, technical workshops, and roundtable discussions to disseminate the results of studies and solicit comments. So our um, workshop for today is on the global economic environment, a symposium on the global economy and what it means for the Philippines. So what we will hear later is um, the first part, there are two speakers or two topics that will be discussed. The State of Southeast Asia 2019 survey results. Um, and they will be presented by, uh, by a recording, recorded presentation, but they will join us later through the open forum. And then we have also invited um, representatives from the Asian Development Bank who will present the impact of trade conflict on developing Asia. And then after that, um, we will hear on um, more, a, a different perspective on enhancing Taiwan-Philippines economic partnership and also RCEP um, and its implications for the Philippines. So um, I hope that everyone will participate um, actively in our workshop and enterprise. Thank you so much, Dr. Kimba, but before we continue, we'd like to welcome Mr. Angelito Bandayo. Welcome to PIDS, sir. Um, yes, uh, we're happy to have you here. May I request the following officials for the photo opportunity? Dr. Sandy Reyes, Ms. Kamehita, Ambassador Lourdes Ipareguere, Dr. Francis Quinta, Mr. Joseph Maria Sinham, Mr. Paul Feliciano, Ms. Christy Su, Mr. Medito Katipa, and Mr. Angelito Panayo. 